Uh, greetings. This is uh, announcement time for St. Augustine's Anglican Church family. Uh, our first announcement is a big thank you to Barry and Anne, who've produced uh, our new directory in a time when we need it the most. Um, here it is. Um, it'll be delivered to you. Again, Barry and Anne have coordinated that, so uh, big congratulations and thank you to Barry and Anne for their hard work. Uh, Parish Council is meeting Monday night. And uh, I want to show you if we, we, how, how on earth is that going to happen. Well, here's a photo. Uh, have a look at that. Uh, Parish Council won't be happening that way. I think that comes from Get Smart. But we did trial this. So have a look at the picture now. That's an example of uh, technology called Zoom. Uh, please be praying for us. Um, the other thing worth mentioning is the invitation to subscribe. Uh, when you're using YouTube, uh, the bottom right corner, I think, underneath the little screen, is a button that says subscribe. And if you subscribe, that means good things for our church family. It won't cost you anything. I don't even think you get notifications. Uh, so please uh, make use of that. Uh, we keep being reminded that this crisis uh, could last many, many months. It's only April. Uh, I keep hearing the date 1st September bandied around. It's a long time. Uh, I know many of our family, well, all of us absolutely love sharing the Lord's Supper. And we will miss not being able to do that uh, as the St. Augustine's Church family. Uh, but we remember, as we think about the Lord's Supper, we remember that uh, the Lord's Supper is not the property of any one denomination. Okay, It's the Lord's. It belongs to Jesus. Uh, and so we need to approach that biblically. We need to think about that biblically. Uh, just because we can't gather in a building um, doesn't mean that Christians cannot practice the Lord's Supper in their homes. Um, the Lord's Supper will not be offered online um, in this diocese. There are pros and cons either way. Um, because it's a sacrament, there is a physical dimension to the Lord's Supper. Uh, just like baptism. Here's a photo of what baptism might look like in a COVID-19 world. Uh, here's a picture of what maybe the Baptists are doing. We should have done this for Robin Warnock the other week. Uh, we can see that there's a, there is a physical nature to it. Um, I want to discourage you, if you're tempted to go looking online for communion, um, remember it's something that the church family does. And it's something that we do as we gather. So what follows... Uh, is is a model. The Draycott family, I'm going to welcome you into our dining room in a minute. We're going to play a video. Uh, we've recorded us doing the Lord's Supper around our dining room table, uh, warts and all. <laughs> and uh, you can watch it. Uh, notice the key elements. We read the Bible. We eat the bread. We drink the wine. I'm reading from 1 Corinthians 11. Uh, verses 23 to 26. Um, so we read the Bible, we eat the bread, we drink the wine or the grape juice, and then we pray. And most especially, uh, we remember the Lord Jesus. And as we do that in our homes, it's good for us to remember, as, I, as you'll hear me say, the past, Jesus has secured our forgiveness. He, the past is he died on the cross. The future is we'll, we'll partake at a table. Uh, the Lord is hosting uh, for eternity, that great, that great banquet. But also in the present, the body of Christ means 
that uh, we who are many are one. And that's true whether that's just a family celebrating at the table or a single person in their home or another family um, somewhere else. Uh, at that point, there is a spiritual dimension that we rejoice in and celebrate at the table. So the encouragement is uh, don't neglect uh, the Lord's Supper. Uh, do it in your homes. Absolutely. Uh, that's a, a godly thing to do. It's absolutely biblical. It also means when you watch the Draycots model it, you need to see me as a husband and as a dad and not as your vicar. Um, you might be tempted to think, oh, it's okay for Adam to do it because he's a, he's a priest or he's a vicar or whatever the case might be. No, you can't think like that. Now, this is something that husbands, dads, single people, uh, household leaders can do and should do. Uh, absolutely. Uh, especially while we're not able to gather uh, as a church family where we normally do. Uh, so I encourage you in that. I'm happy to take any questions. Um, send them. Send an email. Uh, we've been getting... Uh, plenty of emails, lots of encouragement. It's deeply valued. Uh, thank you for blessing us. And um, that's all for now. God bless. So our question is, how do we do the Lord's Supper in a COVID-19 world? And Nick and Joy reminded me that when they were travelling around um, Central Australia, out in the outback, uh, they'd be a long way away from... Um, uh, a local church gathering uh, on a Sunday and quite often uh, if they were travelling with other Christian people on the Sunday uh, they'd share the Lord's Supper together uh, in the caravan and that's a great model for us, a great example for us as we think about the Lord's Supper uh, and today, today the Draycott family are going to model that uh, now we're going to open, we're going to do that by opening up the Bible we're going to read the Bible, we're going to talk about what is here, and uh, you'll see it's not going to be rehearsed at all. Um, we're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and then we'll uh, eat and drink in remembrance of the Lord. And you can see, look, these are just jam jars with a bit of grape juice in it, and a bit of bread that will break up in a moment. Uh, but as we come together around the table, we remember the Lord's table isn't the monopoly of any one denomination. This is something that we can do in our households as families and uh, especially over the Easter period um, and beyond, we encourage people to, to do that. So I want to read from uh, 1 Corinthians 11. <coughs> uh, and this is what's written. It says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said to his disciples, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. But whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So, in that passage, when Jesus talks about the bread and the wine, who is he talking about? <laughs> no? I don't know if you answer questions. <laughs> Have a go. I don't know. Okay, so let me ask you again. When Jesus talks about the bread and the wine, who is he talking about? What are we supposed to remember? Him. Yeah, we remember Jesus. And what did Jesus do? Died on the cross for us. Yeah. Yeah, he gave his body, his body uh, and his blood shed for us on the cross. So when we come around the table, we remember uh, his great work for us. In the past. You remember the past? But also this speaks 
because we, we eat and drink in remembrance of him, how does it talk about the future though? So when it says, who, whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes, what do you think that's about? Whenever you eat the bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. When is he coming? We don't know. We don't know, but he's coming in the future. So when we come to the table, we remember what he's done for us in the past. He died for us on the cross. But we also remember that he's coming again, that we'll share with him, we'll eat at his table in the future. But what about the present? Is there something for us to learn about the present? And this is where I read chapter 10, verse 17. It says, Is not the bread we break a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all share the one life loaf. So what do you think that means, where he says, we who are many are one body? We're all followers of him. We're all followers of Jesus, 100%. So when we come to the table, we remember what Jesus has done way back in the past, that first Easter. We remember that we will eat with him in the future, but we also remember in the present, we are all connected as brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Okay? <coughs> we who are many are one. Is that what it said? There is one loaf. We who are many are one body. Okay? For we all share in the one loaf. So when we eat this, we actually remember that we belong to the family of Christ. And when we eat this, we remember that this is something that other Christians do. And, and maybe Sunday morning... It's something that we can do around our dinner tables, remembering that other Christians are doing the same thing Easter Sunday. So, uh, what do we do first? We do the bread. <laughs> you don't even know. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to remember, buddy. You do the bread and then That's right. So I go to Scripture and it says... This is my body, do this in remembrance, for the, which is given for you, and then the cup. Alright, so I'll break up the bread. What's the matter? Nothing. Into pieces. Okay, remember, uh, we're remembering Jesus. So take some bread, mate. Yep. And we say, Jesus says, This is my body which was given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So we eat this in remembrance of Jesus and we say, Thank you, Jesus. So Jesus said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. So we drink this in remembrance of Jesus. And we say, thank you, Jesus. All right, I'm going to pray. All right. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you that when we share at this table... We remember what he's done for us in the past. His death on the cross for our forgiveness. We remember what he's done for us in the future, that he promises to come again so that we can eat at the table with you. But we also remember the present. We remember that, um, uh, that we are many, yet we are joined together as one, one body in Christ Jesus. And so we thank you for our brothers and sisters uh, in Inverell, in our church family, uh, but also beyond throughout the world. Uh, please protect us and sustain us and strengthen us for your witness. Uh, please
please encourage our hearts by your Holy Spirit that we might glorify you. And we pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.